What happens if you like the Submariner, but you want a noise to flex and it's a little bit too chunky? You like the Daytona, but you don't really need a chronograph. You'd rather have a date, but you like that nice sort of curvaceous form of it. Thankfully, Rolex has you covered with the Yachtmaster 42. Hi everyone and welcome to Shaluso. And before I get started, of course, I'd like to give a big thanks to Timepiece 360 in Dubai for lending in today's watch, the Rolex Yachtmaster 42 in white gold. The early 90s were a key point in defining modern Rolex. Fresh off the release of the 1988-16520 Daytona, the first Daytona to command waiting lists, Rolex was considering pushing the Submariner even further up market to push it as more of a luxury watch. But at the last minute, they decided against killing off their bestseller. Instead, they released the experimental luxury Submariner replacement in 1992, and that was the solid gold Yachtmaster. Featuring a relieved bezel, a cue that would be emblematic of 90s watch design, and the first instance of the bigger hands and indices known as the maxi dial. This set the precedent for the Yachtmaster, pushing boundaries and acting as a testbed for what Rolex would do in the future. And from all the safety of a luxury margin should the watch not sell in Submariner numbers. And this brings us to the Yachtmaster 42 in white gold. The 42 keeps the Yachtmaster's Daytona style case but increases its diameter to 42 millimeters, giving it the visual presence of a Submariner but without the blocky look of the supercase. And as was the case with the maxi dial, this could well spell the next seismic shift in Submariner design. But until then it makes for a truly unique look within the Rolex sports watch catalog. At a glance, the 42 barely looks any bigger than its 40mm counterpart, due to Rolex maintaining the same proportions as the Yachtmaster 40, and its 11.8mm height makes it an ideal companion for suit and shirt cuffs. But on the wrist is where the size and material differences become apparent right away. Despite not having a metal bracelet, the white gold case and clasp add a significant amount of weight to the Yachtmaster, and the increased size is reflected in the length of the lugs hitting 50mm versus the 48 of the regular model. But the Oysterflex bracelet is a masterpiece. The underside allows for plenty of ventilation and the glide lock gives plenty of space for adjustment on the go. And this combination makes it a true luxury sports watch. Extremely comfortable, but still luxurious enough with its white gold case and clasp to not feel embarrassed around aquanauts and offshores. 2019 marks an upgrade across the Yachtmaster line, with the whole collection receiving the Caliber 3235, officially leaving the Submariner behind on a technical front. The 3235 features a 70 hour power reserve as well as the Parachrom hairspring for improved anti-magnetic properties and a Chronogy escapement for improved efficiency. From a practical standpoint, the Yachtmaster still makes use of a trip lock crown and the Oyster case to achieve 100 meters of water resistance officially, however it is tested for much more. And as you unscrew the crown and pull it out to extremity, you have the quick set date change as well as a hacking function to stop the balance so that you can set it precisely. And it goes without saying that as with all modern Rolex movements, it's not only COSC certified, but also a superlative chronometer, meaning it's accurate to plus or minus two seconds per day. And this, combined with the Oyster Flex and the near scratch proof Cerachrom bezel, means that the Yachtmaster 40 can take pretty much any sort of punishment thrown at it within the day-to-day -day lives of the rich and famous, comfortable on the deck of a yacht or falling off of it and into the water of the Mediterranean. While Rolex is known for its little details adding value, the Yachtmaster 42 of course still has the white gold indices, engraved ray hot and laser etched crown on the glass for security, but it also has several other details beyond its size that clearly differentiate it from other Rolex models. The Yachtmaster 42 is the first instance of the fully blacked out ceramic bezel on a white metal, in this case of course being Rolex's grey gold, which never needs to be replated due to the homogeneous composition of the gold, versus traditional white gold which is rhodium plated to achieve its white hue. The 42 is also the first of any Oysterflex model to feature the glide lock that originally debuted on the Submariner. An interesting development considering both Oysterflex and glide lock were released about 10 years ago, yet only in 2019 did they come together on this precious metal Yachtmaster. 
And this is the true spirit of the Yachtmaster collection, the marriage of the best elements from different Rolex sports models, with much less restraint when it comes to trying new looks, movements, sizes, and technologies. When it comes to the future of Rolex, you don't need to look any further than the Yachtmaster. They're telling us exactly what their plans are. So that's my thoughts on the Rolex Yachtmaster 42. And it was a great experience reviewing this watch. First off, because it's one of my favorite Rolexes. It's one of the Rolexes I would actually consider having in my collection. And also because it's just a great example of what happens when Rolex breaks away a little bit more from, from their norm. The Yachtmaster has historically always been a model where Rolex has experimented a little bit more. It was supposed to be a replacement for the Submariner, making it more upmarket and less of a tool watch. In the end, they didn't go through with it, but they still went through with the experiment of making a watch of that sort, and they've held on to it with that. But before I get too far into that, we need to talk about the three positives and negatives of this watch. And the first thing I need to highlight is the glide lock on the Oyster Flex. And this is something that I think has been necessary for a long time, because one of the downsides of an Oyster Flex bracelet is that you only have fixed sizes. You can't cut it to size it. You can still get a replacement strap, but Rolex isn't gonna make it easy or fun for you, and it won't be cheap either. But since this one has the glide lock, you benefit from a lot of adjustability in the clasp, which means you have about 20 millimeters of margin in terms of sizing down or sizing up, just within the clasp itself. So I'm glad that they've included that on this, and I imagine that's something they're gonna include on future Oyster Flex models as well, so they don't have to be as dependent on the sizing. The next thing I wanna highlight about the Yachtmaster 42 is the dial proportions. By making it a 42 millimeter, obviously they've afforded themselves a lot more space on the dial itself, so it means everything just looks a little bit cleaner. Rolexes in general have very crowded dials, even on their three-handers because of all the text that they put on it. But this is five lines of text versus the six on a Daytona or the six on a uh, Submariner. But on top of that, having that extra dial room means you spread everything out. The Cyclops doesn't look as in your face as it does on a 40 millimeter or even a 36 millimeter in the case of date justs and day dates. It all just looks much more proportionate, a lot cleaner, a lot more streamlined and easier to read. And then the last advantage, and I think the most important one, is the fact this is essentially a mix of a Daytona and a Sub. A lot of people are put off by the current sub because of how chunky it looks with the super case, the straight lines, the thick lugs. It's not really a beautiful watch. It's very purposeful. It's still a Submariner the second you look at it, but it doesn't have the same curvaceous beauty that something like a Daytona or a President will have. Meanwhile, something like the Daytona, while yes, it does have that curvaceous body, but also, let's face it, it's near impossible to get a Daytona of any variety these days. And also not everyone wants a chronograph, not everyone wants the complication, not everyone's gonna use it, not everyone wants such a busy dial. So the Yachtmaster offers a great in-between of the two. It has the nice clean looks of a Submariner, it has a date so it's nice and practical, but at the same time it has the curvaceous body of the Daytona, it has the Oyster Flex of course which isn't offered on any Submariner, and also it has that blackout ceramic bezel which gives it a certain presence similar to how it does with the bezel on the Daytona, versus the more colorful and also platinum infilled bezels on the Submariner. So the fact that it meets the two halfway, especially in this iteration, it's a great, great compromise between the two, but it's a compromise where you're not really losing too much either. But of course, no watch is perfect. And the first thing I need to talk about with this is the lug length. The lugs have now been increased to 50 millimeters and you do start to see some overhang on medium to small wrists. I have a seven inch wrist and if you look on my wrist, it's already starting to overhang a little bit. So I think if they'd have kept it at around the 48 millimeters, even though that might have changed the regular proportions, it would have made it a bit friendlier to more wrists without necessarily looking small on a bigger wrist because at the end of the day, it's still a 42 millimeter watch. It still has plenty of presence. The second downside, and I'm not quite sure why they do this, is that it doesn't have a conforming end link so that you have a seamless integration with the Oyster Flex bracelet. But they do this for the Daytona with an Oyster Flex. It does make you wonder, why didn't they just bother putting that on? I feel like it's a small detail where they should have kept it just so I can have a nicer, seam more seamless integration. I think it would definitely add to the look of this watch and make it look just that much better. And then the last disadvantage to this watch is the weight. Now, of course, it weighs more because it's white gold. White gold is much more dense than steel. But this at the end of the day is a sports watch and part of the advantage to sports watches is their ergonomics. And I think this would have been a good opportunity for Rolex 
to perhaps experiment with some different materials other than just precious metals. They could have gone ceramic, they could have gone titanium. They even could have gotten away with it in steel. This could have been the first steel Rolex available on an Oyster Flex, which would be a great way for them to test the market and test the demand. I think there were a lot of options they could have taken. I understand that doing it in white gold is a way for them to get a good margin, especially as they're already experimenting with a new size. But from an ergonomic standpoint, you do notice the weight of this watch. And if that is something that concerns you, then I definitely have to flag it. But of course, that's something that will come down to personal preference at the end of the day. But overall, I think this is still a great, great watch and definitely one that signifies that Rolex is willing to experiment and is still testing the waters. When I did my Rolex predictions video, this was one of the watches that I used as a benchmark for what I thought was going to happen in the future. Because historically, Rolex has used the standard Yachtmaster as a bit of a test bed for what ends up going on to the Submariner. It was the first to use the Maxi dial. They've already included the 3235 in it. It was one of the first to use this idea of Rolesium, which is, which is steel case, steel bracelet, but with a platinum bezel. Similar sort of logic to what they've done with the date just with a white gold bezel for, so you can have it fluted or even the steel sky dweller. Those sorts of concepts, Rolex tends to test them on the Yachtmaster and I think that's to a degree because since the Yachtmaster doesn't sell as well as the Submariner, Rolex knows it won't lose out too much if it alienates people on the Yachtmaster versus if they do a big change on the Submariner. But talking about selling, it does bring us to the price. Now this watch does have a full white gold case in 42 millimeters and a full white gold class that is gonna push the price up. And the Yachtmaster 42 sells at 28,900 US dollars and with a pre-owned pricing of 27 to 36,000 US dollars. Now, before you get too excited about that upper cap, it is important to remember this watch just came out last year. It's still a new Rolex in pretty much every sense of the word. On the face of it, that may seem unreasonable, but you need to think, what are this watch's competitors? Really, the two ones that come to mind are the AP Offshore, and the Patek Philippe Aquanon. Two watches that are known to be on rubber straps, one of which is known to be quite large, so therefore the 42 millimeter comes into size. And more importantly, both of those are watches that sell well over their retail, despite being steel pieces. The Aquanon in steel sells for 19,700 at retail, but on the pre-owned, you're looking at a low end of 27,000 US, going up into the 40s. Meanwhile, with the Offshore, it is a similar story to the Yachtmaster in the sense that it does sell for a little bit below in some cases, but it has been around for longer and there is strong demand for it selling well above its retail as well, coming up into that 28,000, 30,000 US range as well, depending on the model. So both of these show that the Yachtmaster is essentially competing with those on the pre-owned front, not so much on the retail front as both of those are sold for much cheaper on retail, but also a much harder to find at retail. Time will tell whether you can find this at retail, but I think this is a smart move by Rolex bridging the gap and creating something that probably will still be somewhat available in retail stores, but that they can make a good margin on because everyone knows that precious metals are great margins for watches, especially at retail. And then when you consider it as a bridge between the Daytona and the Submariner, well, an Oysterflex Daytona in white gold, you're looking at 29,700, so nearly $30,000. So a little bit more than the Yachtmaster. Whereas if you want a white gold Submariner, you're not getting much change for 40,000 US. So it'll be interesting to see how this performs. But let me know in the comments below, what do you think of the Yachtmaster 42? What do you think of it as a test bed for future sizing, for a future design, for perhaps a comeback of the more curvaceous body style for the Submariner, but with the bigger sizing? Let me know in the comments below because I'd love to know your opinions on what is, in many ways, a very different type of Rolex. And of course, I'd like to give another big thanks to Timepiece360 in Dubai for lending in this watch so I could review it. You'll find their links in the description below. And if you like this video, please do like it and share it. And if you want to see more pictures of this watch and tons of others, as well as the infographics I use, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Shaluso. And if you want to keep seeing new videos about watches, then make sure you subscribe to the channel as well and hit the notification bell so you can know when my next video goes up. In any case though, thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you on the next one.